Hello, and welcome to Book and Loop, where happiness is handmade and the best boyfriends are always found in books. So I'm coming at you guys with another fun book review for today, this time for Maureen Johnson's Truly Devious. So I am not an overly huge murder mystery kind of gal. Um, I'm more so you're very like straightforward fantasy, high fantasy kind of person. I'm not super into like the dark and mysterious mysteries <laughs> um but i actually needed to read this book for work because that is part of my amazing job as a librarian that i get to read sometimes for work and so i had to read truly devious um i've actually read one of maureen johnson's books before i read name of the star by her a really long time ago <laughs> for a library program that i was doing and it was absolutely amazing and i was really surprised because again i'm not like a big murder mystery kind of person but her writing just like so captivating for me and i just love reading the stories that she comes up with i think her characters are really great and interesting and really well developed so without further ado i'm going to jump into discussing maureen johnson's truly devious devious for those of you that don't know is the story of a private school up in mountains in vermont and this school was started by albert ellingham in the 1930s and what basically he wants kids to come to this school to practice the arts learn a bunch of different stuff he doesn't charge the students to come to the school so he's like a very like rich man that like you know is like able to use his money to better the community and he does so there are two different storylines that this story that this book follows so you have the like albert ellingham storyline and then you also have the stevie bell storyline so the albert ellingham storyline kind of like starts us off but we don't really meet albert ellingham that thoroughly within that first chapter um we really start by talking about Dottie, who was an original student at the school and Basically, she gets murdered. She sees something she shouldn't. She runs into a guy she shouldn't have run into, and she winds up getting murdered. Um, that same night, there are people that come and they kidnap Ellingham's family, his wife and his daughter. So this book, you kind of like find out more, mostly the details of what happened that night. Um, you kind of get an idea of, so the people that took Ellingham's family took them because Ellingham had a lot of money and they wanted a lot of money. So they were like, we're going to steal your family so that we can get some ransom money and, you know, get rich off of basically your suffering. So then, like 80, 90 years later, you have Stevie Bell who winds up coming to Ellingham Academy in order to try and solve the murder case. So Stevie kind of thinks of herself as like an amateur detective. She's super into crime stories and listens to crime podcasts. Lee reads a lot of um, mystery novels and like all stuff like that. And that's like her big thing. Like her goal, her ultimate goal in life is like she wants to become a detective. And so since at Ellingham, you don't necessarily have to have like a set structure of what you're going to be learning while you're there. You kind of just work on projects while you're there. Um, Stevie is able to go to Ellingham and kind of create her own curriculum and is able to kind of focus on the, the murder case itself. Um, so there is a wide range of characters in this book. So you have Stevie, who is the future detective. So then you have Janelle, who is, um, an engineering student and you have Nate, who is an english like writing major he wrote a book previously um and he's working on his second one so those are your three freshmen that you have they live in the minerva house and those are the three freshmen that you have and then you have the three upperclassmen which are hayes who is like a internet star um actor kind of type you have ellie who is an artist so then you have david who is a computer scientist and he codes video games so this I was, like I said, I was like pleasantly surprised by this book because it's not really like exactly like what my cup of tea normally is. Like I'm, again, like super into high fantasy and the occasional 
contemporary romance. Um, so this book like surprised me that I liked it so much. It did take me longer to read it than I normally probably would have because I was kind of like only reading it when I was at work and had like finished all of my other work already that I needed to do for the day. I would like pick this up at the end of the day and read a few. But like towards the end, I wound up actually just taking it home with me and just like finishing the rest of the book because it was just that good. And I was like, I need to know what happens. And I was so upset because the second book is checked out at the library already. So I have to try and see. I got to put myself on the, on the holds list so that I can get my hands on the second book. So there's four books in this series total. You start off by, so the book is called Truly Devious. There's a character there's the mysterious character that you don't know um just yet who he is even at the end of the first book um stevie kind of has like an idea of who it might be but they're not entirely sure they write the poem for the that gets sent to the ellingham house the great house right before the kidnappings are going to happen stevie mentions that you the letter at the beginning they list all the different ways that you could murder somebody basically and you kind of see each murder get played out like you have the drowning of miss ellingham she was also shot as well and then you have the suffocation of Hayes later on and you have dotty who was hit on the head and like died that like took a nasty fall and like died that way so you have um like that kind of like layout so i'm curious to see in the other three books if you'll see the rest of those predictions kind of like come true so i have to say i was a little upset because i really thought that stevie and nate were gonna get together i feel like kind of like set that up that it was going to be stevie and nate um i think i really liked nate a lot as a character probably because he was a writer and I want to be a writer and I could see a lot of myself in him um and I actually was talking to my one co-worker she read it as well for the same thing and she said that she didn't think that Stevie and Nate would necessarily work because they are like too similar but I don't know I think they <laughs> I thought they were kind of cute like I love the whole scene towards the end where Nate comes into her room and is like I'm gonna take you to the dance now and we're gonna go have fun like you've been in your room sulking for too long and like it's my duty as your friend to take you out and get you out of your room and like we're gonna go have fun together so I thought Nate was really sweetheart I really didn't I, I won't lie I didn't really like necessarily like love him at the beginning because he seemed like a little too offstanded he also was very like like look I felt like he like low-key like looked down on Stevie and Janelle and like the rest of the people in Minerva house a little bit but you could see like, he like warmed up like after like the first like few days like you could see he kind of was just like that shy kid that like off standish kid he kind of like put up these walls and defenses and then was like slowly like gradually breaking them down and I feel like it really like all tied together very nicely when Nate took Stevie to the dance like I feel like that was like the moment where you were like okay Nate's like a sweetie like we like Nate now <laughs> um so that being said yes I was a little upset that um Stevie and Nate weren't together I don't really love David I won't <laughs> I didn't know that like might be like an unpopular opinion but like I don't really I didn't really like love David um I felt like he was like a little too much like a little too like out there for me um it's definitely like a different kind of love interest than like we're used to seeing um like mainstream typical like love interest where you have like that like tall dark and like brooding guy like it was was refreshing to have it be like the comedic character more so be the love interest um I loved the scene where he kind of went I loved the scene where he went into town like secretly with the intention of going out with Stevie and her parents um but he tried to like play it off like really cool and like he really like helped keep Stevie at the school and I thought that was really great I thought that was really interesting of him especially because we don't really see them interact all that much like we really and that was like what kind of led me to believe that it was going to wind up being Stevie and Nate in the end was because you see a lot of Stevie and Nate together. You even see a lot of Stevie and 
I keep wanting to say Nash because like Nash Greer I don't know why like that was like the kind of persona that like he had to me I don't know why um Hayes <laughs> so like Stevie and Hayes you see a lot together and you see Nate and Stevie a lot together but you don't really get a whole lot of David and Stevie together except for like these very like short awkward interactions so it was almost like I was like almost taken aback when they did get together I was like this is, like feel it felt like a little forced but as they interacted more and more afterwards I could kind of see it a little more if that makes sense I'm curious to see where they're gonna go now with that like big reveal of David being Edward King. So David being Edward King's son is interesting. I don't remember if we ever heard David's last name. I don't even know if we've ever heard Ellie's last name now that I'm thinking about it. And don't even get me started on Ellie. Like honestly, like don't get me started on Ellie. I could not believe that she was the one who like was the mastermind i don't want to say necessarily she murdered Hayes because like it's i feel like it's like iffy on that like i feel like she couldn't have like done it herself and like maybe that was like part of it was that like i really like thought it was gonna be david like i was like yep yep david's weird david's weird he's reacting like a little weird to all this like maybe he felt like competition or he I don't know just like I don't know and like David I guess like really and I think Stevie points it out too at the end like David really like didn't have a motivation for like murdering Hayes whereas Ellie like once you think about it like yeah she kind of did I feel like I didn't really see any examples of like Ellie like ever being like weird or like ever being like off-putting and like I guess that's like on purpose because they're, the author is trying to like throw you off the track of like who did actually <laughs> commit the murder um and again like I do think I don't want to say I keep saying murder but like I don't really necessarily want to say murder because like I'm I feel like Ellie didn't mean for that to happen I feel like she was maybe just trying to like get back at him and I mean I agree with Stevie's reasoning in that like the reason that she thought that it was Ellie was because Ellie is obviously like a very artsy artistic person and so like she would have wanted to go for like that like grand like oh like all like the dry ice smoke comes out and it's creepy and like I feel like she was trying to like maybe scare him almost like I don't think that she expected him to like die because of it and I feel like that kind of was exemplified really well because she cried a lot but also like when in the book she was crying a lot over Hayes dying it kind of just felt like that was like her kind of person like you could see like she is very eccentric and she's very like emotional and she's like all the time like very like and granted majority of the novel that we see her she's mainly either happy or drunk or kind of just like weirding everybody else out in the house except David David was never really weirded out by her so that makes me wonder like if they're like both in on this a little bit but I'm not sure probably not though because David seemed like very surprised but also like when they're doing the never have I ever which they call it a different name in this they don't call it never have I ever I never they call it instead of never have I ever so they play I never and the like David just seems like very like upset over like Stevie attacking Ellie and I don't know if it's just because like they're friends and they're obviously very close I mean you see like they're constantly laying all over each other and like hanging out and like talking and like it's a lot of the times just the two of them and it's very like interesting and you even have that point where David lies and says that they were smoking together and I don't know if he I don't remember I I really gotta start taking notes when I read um that night that the cops come to interrogate them for the first like the first time right after finding Hayes's body they have David lies to Stevie and he lies to the police too I guess because he tells Stevie that they were like David and Ellie were hanging out and they were smoking but he really they said they were just talking until midnight and then obviously like then like the times would match up that like ellie wasn't with him after midnight um 
and so she went to go scan into the art barn and get the dry ice and all that um it's just like interesting that like stevie doesn't really like push the issue of david lying and like david kind of like covered ellie a little bit i mean we could have been unknowing like he could have just been like yeah i was with her that night like what like you he obviously like didn't suspect anything of her like he didn't suspect that like she would go and like you know steal janelle's badge and go into the art barn and get the dry ice and carry all of it down to the thing and also the other part like there's just like so many like untied ends with this book and i'm like so excited that's why like part of the reason i'm so excited to get the second one and to jump into it is because like they point out i think it was larry the security guard points out that they were 20 pound blocks of ice and so ellie being able to move all that on her own seems like a little much so i'm curious to know like did david help her and like that's what i feel like is gonna wind up being the truth like that david helped her um I'd be very interested if he didn't, how she did it. Someone had to help her. I don't know who it would be. I mean, I don't think it was Hayes's ex-girlfriend. Because I feel like that would just be, like, a little too obvious. But also, like, maybe David's obvious. Is David obvious? Like, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I definitely didn't think that the secret that his dad was Edward King was going to be what the secret that he was hiding was. Because he was, right, like secretive and like hiding things and while like and while I like don't necessarily agree with state with Stevie <laughs> with Stevie and while I don't necessarily agree with Stevie like going through David's stuff and then later on going through Hayes's stuff although Hayes's stuff was like a little more understandable because obviously Hayes was murdered and so as somebody who is trying to solve the truly devious case and after having seen somebody flash the truly devious sign up on her wall through the window like it kind of like was a little more like forgivable like she went through Hayes' stuff but her going through David's stuff was like no good but like he was clearly like hiding something from her and I didn't think it was gonna be that because I feel like that's like not that big of a deal I mean, I guess maybe, like, if Stevie comes in and, like, David is like, oh, like, what are your parents doing? And she's like, oh, like, they work for the worst man ever. Like, they, he, they work for this politician, whatever. And David's like, oh, that's my dad. Like, I guess it would, like, be awkward. So, like, he probably, I mean, obviously it seems like he doesn't really get along fully with his dad. And so I'm thinking that maybe he has always hid who he was like i said i don't remember him ever even giving his last name when they first meet him if he said my name is david king then like you would think stevie would like put two and two together but i do think that he was very sweet that he like helped stevie's parents move up although it was like not what stevie wanted and also like and also i think like low-key not what david wanted um it was still nice of him to help Stevie's parents to get like a better role working for his dad um in order to help Stevie not necessarily like for the parents but for Stevie in that like he clearly wanted her to stay and clearly like knew she wanted to stay and that this would be a good way for her to be able to stay if things were going really well for the parents um or even like the fact that he like pretended to be not like pretended to be her boyfriend but like pretended to be somebody that was like interested in her and she was interested in in order to like again like get her parents kind of like off her back so that she could stay at school and continue to learn and so try to solve the mystery and the murder of what was going on so like i said i was very surprised because i didn't feel necessarily like ellie was going to wind up being the person that was doing the, the murdering basically in this book and i think it was really just like an interesting twist for me um and part of the reason that i was like oh my god i need to like know what happened especially like she escaped at the end like where where did she go like she's got to be coming back 
no, like, she's got to be, like, mad at Stevie that Stevie basically, like, Ellie was in the clear. Like, Ellie was fine. Like, no one suspected Ellie of doing anything. First of all, because of who she is as a person, her overall personality, and the fact that she was so devastated by everything, um, she was kind of, like, a little too flighty, I think, that they would be, like, yes, like, it was her. Like, she clearly presented herself as somebody that was not completely all there and so in doing that she kind of was able to like throw everybody off her track um and then for stevie to turn around and like figure it out over such like a small thing it felt like so sherlock holmes-ish like i loved it when she was thinking about the computer and she's like oh like i don't remember these scratches from that day that we were that Hayes went back and realizing that it was from the bathtub like I like that's like crazy to me that like she was able to put two and two together and knowing that it would be Ellie because Ellie was the one that was always in the bathtub and like always like hung out in the bathroom all the time for whatever reason um I just think it's interesting and I did I also think the motive behind it is interesting in that I still don't fully understand why exactly it was that Ellie did what she did because it kind of seems like she was like okay with what was going on like she presents as being like somebody who's like very straightforward and she got what she wanted she helped Hayes come up with the story the end of it all and then got her money and was able to buy her saxophone so it just seems like I don't know like I'm interested to see like what more is going on there like was there like a secret relationship kind of thing like was she like all of a sudden like not okay with Hayes using her ideas to get money and like now like I mean like Stevie theorizes that it's because the movie was going to be coming out for the end of it all and they he was going to get like a big huge deal and a ton of money for it and was starting a new project and doing the same thing where he was using stevie and nate and those other two characters who i can't remember what their names are that were like the upper class man and one was his girlfriend and one was the like special effects guy i don't know because just like doesn't seem like ellie but also like we clearly don't know her that well again like she's kind of similar to david where you don't really have stevie fully interacting with the upperclassmen all that much i mean she does interact with ellie probably the most out of all the upperclassmen well besides Hayes, obviously because like she's with Hayes for like a lot of the time while they're like filming and prepping and like you get a good idea who Hayes is but i would say that it's probably like the order is probably like Hayes, then ellie then david of like who stevie hangs out with the most out of the upperclassmen and I do think that's, like, interesting <laughs> that, like, David is last, obviously. Um, since he is supposed to be, like, the one that Stevie is, like, interested in. Um, I do, like, I don't know. Like, I do, while I was surprised by the choice of David being the love interest, I was, like, pleasantly surprised by it, almost. Because I like thought it was like just so interesting because you have like this character who's like basically like is dirty like wears ripped clothes doesn't really wash his clothes ever and like presents as like being this like very like nonchalant not non-caring like very like jokester comic relief like kind of guy and I feel like it doesn't fully match up with Stevie's personality like Stevie is very like you can see throughout the book she's very worried about a lot of different things she struggles with a lot of anxiety and maybe it is something like that where it's like David is such a carefree kind of person that Stevie finds it interesting and finds it attractive in that like David is able to kind of just like be himself and like he's not really like worried about like what other people are thinking in like YA and most books in general typically the love interest is like the very suave one he's nicely dressed he wears like really fine clothes he has, usually has like really dark hair which david does have dark hair but he 
is very well put together and mannered despite usually being like not a bad boy but I mean like sometimes like yeah like a bad boy but like the badass character whereas like David is like the opposite in everything but his physical appearance where well I mean not necessarily like his hair is dark and I believe they say his eyes are dark too so like he has like that whole like dark hair dark eye brooding kind of thing but he's not really like a broody character he's more so of like a like it's like it's weird like I don't know how to explain it like Nate takes on like that broody characteristic whereas like David is more like the lovable best friend character like if you were to have like that stereotypical like love triangle where you would have like Stevie and then I mean like obviously like Nate and Stevie like are not interested in each other at all but I'm putting him in there because I feel like he was like more necessarily like he was maybe more of like what I expected the love interest for Stevie to be like so I'm gonna put him I'm gonna insert him into one of the corners of the triangle and then you have David where you have like David would be like the I'm trying to think of like a love triangle that's like similar but I like I don't know I can't like think of one so like say like Red Queen you have like Mare and then you have Killorn and you have Cal and then like Cal is like that like silent broody type which is like more like Nate and then you have Killorn who's kind of like a little more jokey and like very like you know like arm nudging humor and that's more so David and it's interesting to see that reverse because typically in YA and obviously it doesn't happen all the time but typically in YA you would have it where it would be that brooding character that gets chosen to be the love interest so it is refreshing to have it where it's the joking like funny character that is intended to be the love interest um I'm curious to see now with like this new revelation of like who exactly David is and that his dad is Edward King who Stevie hates with all of her heart and soul um if that's going to put a damper on things I'm also curious to know I mean like if the parents really work that that closely with Edward King like have Stevie and David cross paths before and like is that really why he looks so familiar um like obviously like she says in the book like she can tell but I think she said their noses were very similar and she thinks that's why she kind of recognized David but I'm curious to see especially now that the parents are higher ups for Edward King's campaign is it going to be where now David and Stevie are gonna have to like hang out like you know at home like during winter break or during assuming they have like a winter break like a normal college winter break I don't know because it's high school but it's boarding school but it's like a weird school and then obviously you have like the murder and then Ellie's now on the loose so I feel like I don't know I'm pretty sure when I was reading the synopsis for the second book it said that it was going to take place back in Pittsburgh which is where um Stevie is from so I'm very curious to see like what exactly is going to happen with them um what do you do when you absolutely hate the father of the person that you're supposed to be romantically interested in so I'm curious to see exactly what will happen I feel like this there needs to be more there's gonna be more murders I feel like in the coming books I feel like how could you not like that was like a whole long list and we only touched upon a little bit of the different ways to be murdered and so I feel like we're probably gonna see a few more characters kick the bucket a little bit more <laughs> in the next few books and I think that that is I don't want to make any predictions about who it's going to be um but if I had to guess I feel like it's gonna be maybe Nate because I don't think it would be David because I feel like that like David would be like he's like the love interest he can't he can't kill off the love interest I mean you can there are plenty of people that have done it but like you can't kill off the love interest <laughs> don't do this to me
So there, there are two more things on the Stevie Bell side of the story that I want to discuss, and then I will very briefly discuss the Ellingham side of the story. So first, Stevie, um, when the truly devious letter shows up, um, reflected on her wall of her room, um, I feel like it wasn't Ellie, and I know this is like getting like this is like that's the one thing about murder mysteries is that like a lot of times like you can get like really like speculative with them and because like you don't know until the end like you don't have all the facts until the end and that's by design and that's on purpose because it's a mystery and you're supposed to be trying to figure it out yourself but I feel like it wasn't Ellie I feel like it was like low-key David trying to play like a prank on her I I don't know why I just feel that way I just I don't know I just feel like it wasn't Ellie um even though Stevie seems pretty convinced that it was Ellie. But I guess we'll see what will happen. I don't know. I'm assuming that the letter will show up again. I'm assuming Ellie will show up again. The other thing I wanted to point out was the the fact that Ellie has bad anxiety and the fact that she uses the like murder cases and listening to podcasts and like all these different coping mechanisms that she uses to help herself get through. I thought it was really great. And I thought it was really great representation. And I think that it was really, really effectively used in the book as well. Um, like it wasn't her whole personality and it wasn't like something that was just like mentioned once. Like you can see instances of her um, kind of like slipping into that anxiety or like slipping into those anxiety attacks. I feel like her inner thoughts and her emotions and her um anxiety itself was presented in a really great way okay so jumping into Ellingham so I felt so horrible for Ellingham I will not lie to you um the poor guy just wanted his family back and he was willing to do anything and if you can't get behind that then I don't know what you're doing but he was like such a good guy and like was so pure with everything that he did like he literally opened up these this school so that kids could come and learn for free and they had the chance to pursue their own passions and interests and he was like a very openly public figure and like yeah he liked to party but like he wasn't necessarily like a bad person like he like you can see at the end of the book when they do the whole final piece with Voracek's trial that they talk about how the townspeople surrounding the school loved Ellingham because he brought so much money to the town and he donated a ton to the fire department and like helped with the economy and stuff like that so he like really was like a good guy who was just trying to do the best he could with his money and he was somebody that was like very caring and he really loved his wife and his kids and like to have them like taken away from you and then to continuously have them be out of reach even when you're meeting the demands of the person like can be really upsetting and frustrating and it is like upsetting to like read about like his decline like as a result of his family being stolen where like he is like almost obsessive about it and like he you know drains the lake and he like does all these different things to try and like find his family and make sure that when his family does come back to him that the house is going to be the same and that everything will be as they left it and Alice his daughter can come back and everything will be okay again and that's all he really wants and I think it's like such a tragic ending that I mean like it seemed like Voracek knew who did it and he gets you know unalived at the end of the book um right before being able to tell Ellingham who actually was behind the kidnappings and Dol Dolores or Dottie's murder and it is just like so like sad it's so sad and you feel bad for him because like you can see that like desperation and that like it doesn't matter what he has to do it doesn't matter how much money it costs it doesn't matter um if he has to go alone or get killed himself he wants his family back and I I love like I love family man <laughs> so like I really thought that Ellingham was a really great character and I thought that his whole storyline was just heartbreaking and so you're like 
almost root you're rooting for him even though you know he doesn't get his family back like every time they go to meet up with the kidnappers and to give them the ransom money like you're cheering for him and you're like yes like you go you like this is it he's gonna get them back and then he doesn't and you know he doesn't but you still like just can't help yourself from just rooting for him because he is such a likable character and he is so dedicated to his wife and kid and it just makes it really like all the more sad that he's unable to save them. I'm sorry, my throat is dry. Okay. So that is my overall <laughs> review, impressions, thoughts on Maureen Johnson's Truly Devious. Um, I am out of order. I know I'm out of order. I was supposed to do a review of Where Dreams Descend. I had to return it to the library before I could finish it. I just kind of had a lot going on in my life and was not able to finish reading it. So I told myself that I was going to try again um, in a few months. Let me, re let me read the books that I don't necessarily have a time limit on first and then I can worry about that one. So I'm going to try and pick that one up again later on. I think I made it like a quarter of the way through the book and it was good so far but it was, a uh, I had to, I had to bring back to the library. So I was like, okay, we'll try again later. Um, so I, this kind of like had to jump the line on my TBR list behind me because I needed to read it for work. So I am really super glad that I did get to read this. Um, I don't know if it was necessarily something I normally would have picked up on my own, but I wound up really falling in love with it and really enjoying it and it really made me happy and <laughs> it's weird because like I said I'm not like a murder mystery kind of person like I don't I don't like like murder mystery movies I don't like um like horror movies I'm not into thrillers like that's just like not me do not like that stuff but I really loved this and I was really happy about it because I mean like it's always really great to be surprised by a book that you didn't think you were gonna like or not that I didn't think I was gonna like it because like I said I read The Name of the Star by Maureen Johnson a long time ago so I already knew her writing and knew that I liked her writing but it's nice to be surprised by a book that you is outside of your comfort zone or outside of like where you would normally be reading you know does that make sense so that is going to be all from me today. That is my spiel for Maureen Johnson's Truly Devious. Um, I am super excited to eventually read the second book once it's back off of being checked out at the library. So if you haven't read Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson, I definitely suggest that you go and check it out. Um, it is really, really great. The characters are really great. The story writing is amazing the mystery itself is really fascinating so i feel like i'm definitely going to be obsessively reading this series <laughs> over the next few weeks um it just was really good and really surprising and something that i really really enjoyed and i hope that you guys enjoyed too so if you have read truly devious and have not yet read the other books and you have some theories about what's going to be happening in the next couple of books please leave a comment below um not give me any spoilers so i don't need to cry about getting this series spoiled for me because it is so amazing and i really just like am loving it and i'm like the kind of person that like always accidentally spoils the book for myself anyway like i spoiled burning maze for myself by accident in the trials of apollo and i was like super upset about it um i like i don't know i just like can't like sometimes like just can't avoid spoilers i don't know why it's like a curse i always wind up getting like a little bit spoiled um so yeah so if you have any theories or you agree with some of my thoughts then like drop a comment below and I'd love to discuss theories further with you guys because I think that this is a really amazing book and I think that the rest of the series is going to be just as amazing I do ask again please don't spoil so if you enjoyed this review and you want to see more reviews, make sure to like this video so that I can kind of get an idea of what exactly you guys are looking to see from this channel. So that is going to be it for me. Um, I hope you guys go and pick up Truly Devious and happy reading.